wanted to chat with you this morning. This is, uh, I've been here one week. This is day seven. Just wanted to share with you this morning how I felt from traveling from London to Delhi to Dunedin to here. That was an experience just on its own. I was talking to my girlfriend in Australia about this and I didn't really think this was gonna happen. This trip was going to happen because of COVID, because of the rise of Omicron. I was waiting for the hotel to shut down and I was just okay. I was just open with whichever way it went. But nothing, none of that happened. Everything just kept going and flowing and I just kept going with it. And it wasn't until I was in the car on the way to Heathrow, London Airport going, this is really going to happen. I'm really going to India. So then fast forward, get on the flight, get off. You might've seen some of this in my highlights, which are in my India highlight on my Instagram. So then the things that happened and the experiences I had from the time I landed to the time I got here to the hotel were brilliant. What I wanted to share with you is about how I felt traveling as a 50 year old woman. So I get there, you know, rushed off to the PCR. You have to sit, you wait an hour and a half. You are literally going, oh my God, did I get COVID on the plane? Did I get COVID on the plane? <gasps> if, I get, if I test positive, I'm going to an institutional facility. <laughs> and I went to walk over there and then these men were yelling at me like, are you married? Are you married? Are you married? And it was a bit like, whoa, a bit intimidating. And I thought, oh, I'm not gonna sit there. I'm gonna go walk back and sit with everybody else. <laughs> I snapped at them. I went, da, da, da. <laughs> it's just, that was my reflex. And then walked and that sort of threw, threw me a bit. I thought I stayed in the terminal. Then I just go to the domestic part, terminal, this to that terminal and get on my flight. And that wasn't the case. I had to get on a bus and travel 30 minutes to the terminal I had to get to, to get on my domestic flight. And so I asked the security guys as I'm going, you know, how do I get there? I was definitely not going to get a taxi. You said, go to pillar 10, bus number 11 or 9, 11, blah, blah. So I did that. I totally, and then, no, 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 you go there, I go there. And I was like, no, you go there. I was like, far out. <laughs> and then I get on and um, bags of nobody's helping you. And then I go and put the trolley over there. Being maybe blonde and a woman on my own, traveling on her own, you know, everyone just stares at you. And then I'm on the bus and the, even there's the bus driver and there's the, the, the couple of other guys there sitting there and they just stare at you. And when I spoke to the security guard, he said, there's a free bus, it's a free bus, blah, 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 blah. Free shuttle, free bus. So then I get my bags and then, and again, no one helps me, which is fine, but I would help me. Do you know what I mean? I would help another woman, I would help a man, I would help an elderly woman. That's just, it's equality. I'm not looking for chivalry, I'm looking for equality. I would expect someone to do what I would do. It didn't happen. That's okay because I am independent, strong, doesn't matter. And then I'm sitting there and there was another man sitting opposite me and that his name was Amit. And he said to me, they're all talking in their language. And he said, oh, they're, they're praising you. I said, oh, he said, yeah, they're praising you because you put the trolley back. I was like, hmm, I said, oh, that's nice. And then we got chatting on where he was going and what was happening. And then the guy walks through and he's like, I think it was 25,000 or 250 rupees. You know, I thought about it. I thought about it in London and I thought about it when I landed, gotta get some rupees, gotta get some rupees. I thought, card, card, card. I'm on the bus, got no money. Got no money at all. And I've been chatting with Amit and I just went, Does it, did they take card? He's like, no. I was like, oh my God. And I looked at him and said, could you please pay for me? And, and I will, when we get to, to the, 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 the airport, I can get money out, or I can buy your coffee, I can do whatever. He's like, yeah, yeah, no, no, no worries, no worries. And we got chatting, he's a doctor, he's a neuro anesthetist. You know, experiences like that and having someone there to help me guide me and he sort of helped me to getting into the domestic airport. And then when we were there, we were on different flights and I'd already checked in and I sort of said, well, I'll go in. I said, I'll see you over there. He goes, well, if we don't, it doesn't matter. I went, okay, okay. Sure enough, he found me at Starbucks and we had a chat and he was just a lovely, lovely man from Cambridge. But you'll see in my highlights, one of his friends tested positive when they got off the plane and got chipped off to a um, institutional facility, which was just like, oh my gosh. He showed me the photo. It looked like a, a hospital room and they're in like the hospital gown seven days. I didn't really process that. I didn't really think about the consequences because that could have been me. We say goodbye and I go on and I get onto my you have to get a bus from, we're in the terminal, but a bus to the plane, you know, which I think most of us have done in our time. And I get onto the bus and there's no seating to the right, it's just open, and to my left 
it's seating and it's packed with all Indian men sitting there and they're all being very loud and raucous and I get on and it goes silent and everyone's just staring at me. And I was like, and I looked to the left, I looked to the right. The only seat available was at the back. The whole back seat was free. You know, traveling on my own, this is, this is what I wanted to share is, it's such a different feeling traveling on your own to traveling with my children. So I felt this freedom. I felt fearless. I felt invigorated. I felt like I was 20 again. I haven't traveled on my own like this for 30 years. I go home to Australia and all that on my own, but that's not the same, coming to a country that you've never been to before and you don't speak the language. And I just had a moment and it was a moment, a mummy moment my mum. So when we were young, growing up in New Zealand, there were two major gangs, bike gangs. One was called the Black Power and the other one was called House Angels. That's, you know, we knew of them and you'd see them when we'd be driving, going on, you know, if we're driving for an hour to Iriwa or somewhere. Anyway, they were in Browns Bay, our little suburb. Mum and I were going somewhere just to the shop and she parked and we got out and they were all there like on the path where we had to walk through to get to where we were going, just on the little main strip. I'm thinking, Mum, can't we just cross the road? <laughs> I remember being so scared. She stood there and there's maybe 15, 20 gang members. And uh, Mum was like, get out of my way. <laughs> I'm like, oh my God, we're gonna die, we're gonna die. <laughs> and the head guy just looked at them all and went, move for the lady. And mum held her head up high and dragged me through. And I just remember th those moments, you know, mum was such a powerful, strong woman, but she was brought up in an orphanage. She was in and out of foster homes. She was never adopted. She ran away, came back, they bring her back. She was a tough cookie. No education, no formal education. I always just would remember thinking, where does that come from, this confidence that she had? But she was never a victim. Uh, look, there's so much to, to say about my mum because she was just a, such an amazing person when we were growing up. She was my hero. Oh, I'm gonna cry. So I'm there and I just thought of mum. This moment of, it was intimidating, all these men and they're all staring at you. And uh, I thought they were one big group together. And I just held my head up high and I walked through them all and I sat down and I went right to the back seat. I sat down right in the middle, so I'm looking at the ball, and they're all like this, staring at me. I'm like, hi, 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 hi. And this guy goes, hello, mum. I go, how are you? And so they weren't all together. They're all different groups. And I start chatting with these three young guys. You'll see them on my highlights on, on uh, Instagram. And they were going, they were coming to the same place. And they were coming here and they were going trekking through the Himalayas for three days and just really sweet guys. But you know, they had all the things here and the, the, the hats here and all covered up. It's a little intimidating, but it wasn't. And then when I'm sitting there and talking with these boys, they were just lovely. And then, you know, they wanted to know, what do you do? And I go, oh, I got a YouTube channel. Oh, let me see. And then when they're doing Instagram and they're like, oh my God, photo, photo, photo. And then photo, no, no, it must be video. No one will believe us. Hi. I landed they made sure I was okay thank you you lovely young boys I know you're following me now <laughs> but you know if I had been with my three children and I walked on that bus I would have gone right I wouldn't have done that do you know what I mean because you're protective and you're worried and the whole this whole trip would have been totally different if I had my children with me and my my mindset the way I, I feel and the way I react you know because they are your priority well when it's just you and you're traveling on your own and literally on your own it's a sense of freedom i felt so i felt so amazing before i even got to the hotel before i'd even started this wellness program and ayurvedic treatments and living i was already full you know my heart was full i was just like to be 50 and having this experience is a real wake-up call for me to go you know do more of this I have three children, I am a mum, I am a wife, but I am still Kelly Mackey. This is my life too. This is my story I'm writing. This is my journey. You know, it's there's got to be more than just give, 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 give all the time. And there is. And I've proven that and I've lived that. Then we land and I, I go out and I meet my driver and there's another blonde woman standing there. And I shuffle over to her. I go, well, we're the only two blondes here. She goes, where are you staying? Where are you? And, you know, she was staying at another hotel. Two blondes. She was Australian, both live in London. I'm a Kiwi. 
two women over 50. Anyway, so then I'm driving through and I'd, I'd had a look, I'd been watching a lot of YouTube videos on all the surrounding areas in Rishikesh and just to mentally sort of prepare myself, you'll see the video, the full video when I talk about my experience. It's just crazy, I'm just driving through and then we get to this little intersection and it's, it's mad. And I just sit there and my thought process, I just go, oh my God, my dad would have loved this. I was like, you know, I didn't have much of a relationship with my dad. I met him when I was 18 and look, that's another story. But for that thought to come in, it was just like, and he would have, but how do I really know that? But it, I, I know he was very much into, you know, a different way of life. So what was beautiful for me is, you know, to have mum and dad, they're both passed, but to be present on this trip, I am meant to be here. I know I am. And you know, my, my tank was full just from that experience. And then coming here, there, there's so much to say. There's so much to say, but that's another video because this is long enough. Anyway, I just wanted to share that just to say, you know, it's got to do things that excite you, that make you feel alive again, and whatever that be. But just don't forget about you and your soul and your purpose and what life means to you. What does life mean to you? What does living mean to you? Tell me. What does it mean to you to just exist or to live, to truly live? It's about changing things, switching things up, you know, change the dial, change the tone, change the environment and see how you feel because I feel freaking amazing. <laughs> All right, bye.